الأمريكية طلع مواطن أسود أصله من كينيا أفريقي ومسلم وكان يدرس في مدرسة إسلامية في إندونيسيا اسمه أوباما والناس كلهم صفقوا لهذه الشخصية في الوطن العربي وفي العالم الإسلامي وفي أفريقيا استقبلوا بخير وصفقوا له وصلوا من أجله ودعوا له بالنجاح وربما يكونوا قد دخلوا حتى في حملة التبرع الشرعية ل لتمكينه من الفوز في رئاسة أمريكا. You are absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith, and you are absolutely right that that has not Christian come faith. at my, my Christian faith. My Muslim faith, my Christian faith, uh, 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 my, my Christian faith, my Muslim faith. It's okay for Muslim to lie. Therefore, it's okay for Obama to lie. It is lawful in Islam to deny your face. Can you imagine with me, just imagine with me for a minute, Obama is going to run as the President of the United States of America. And he will tell the American people, I'm a Muslim. And I believe that Christians are infidel. And I believe we must chop off the head of the Christian. How many Christians do you think in America will vote for him? I bet he will lose his job as a senator. That's what's going to happen. 26 years ago, Obama thought, as he said in his books, to be the president of the United States. And he saw how hard it was for Kennedy to be a president. And Kennedy was what? Was a Catholic. What is the chance for a Muslim to be a president of this country? Therefore, 20 years later, 20 years ago, he claimed to be a Christian. He joined a cult church. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. So it is no option for Obama. He is forced and to denounce that he is a Muslim, not denouncing he is a Muslim, just lie and say he's a Christian to be the president of the United States of America. How about this next verse? But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. This is what the scripture teach. You deny Jesus before men, Jesus will deny you before God, before the angels. You know how many millions Christian were killed? For the last 2,000 years, I mean, since the beginning of Christianity until the persecution was what? Resultant of a Christian refused to deny Jesus. Millions of our millions killed by all kind of people, and especially the last 1,400 years, by the hand of Muslims, simply because they refused to deny Jesus. And the Quran teaches what? It's okay to deny that you are a Muslim if you are forced into it. If this is the only way you can be the president of the United States. How about this next verse in the Quran? God will not hold you responsible for your unintentional oath, but he will hold you responsible for that which your hearts have earned, and God is forgiving, forbearing. It is lawful in Islam to lie in your oath. You put your hand on the Quran and you swear, I swear to tell the truth before Allah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not whatever. You can lie. Did you mean it in your heart? No, then it's okay. If your heart is secure in faith that you are a Muslim, it's okay to lie. You know what's amazing in this next hadith, as I'm going to read it for you, this hadith teaches that it's okay to lie in three cases. I'm not going to read the Arabic for you, we'll just read the English. Muhammad said, it is lawful to lie in three cases. A man to his wife, that you will be pleased with him. So at the time of war, you also can lie. And then you can lie to make peace between two Muslim brothers. What does the Bible say? Thou shall not lie.
and fight them until there will not be any disputes and the religion will be completely to God. Chapter 8 verse 39 is a very important verse in the Quran. Why? Because that tells us we are in war. Muslims are commanded to wage war against Christian and Jew, the infidel, yourself, until when? Until the religion of Allah take over the world. Until Islam take over the world. In other words, they are the one who starts the war 1400 years ago and they will continue having it until everybody in planet earth become muslim until everyone surrender that's what the word muslim is submit to muhammad and to allah and to the muslim so do not be weak and do not call for peace when you have the upper hand and god is with you and he will not decrease your work Muslim, as they normally are, when they go to a new country, like when they went to Europe 50, 60 years ago, they were peaceful. They were loving. Why? Because they did not have the upper hand. But 50 years later, Europe today are in chaos. I'm talking about all Europe. That's England and Ireland and Holland and Germany and name it. Why? Because Muslims there today, they do have the upper hand and they obey their Allah and they obey the verse of the Quran. Therefore, they are now no longer crying for peace, but they asking for Sharia law, Islamic law to be practiced in, in Europe. They will never cry for peace when they have the upper hand. But when they do have the upper hand, they will go by their might and by their words of the Quran. In 9.5, the Quran says, so, when the forbidden months are past, so kill the idolaters wherever you find them, and take them, and besiege them, and lay wait for them with every kind of ambush. So if they repent, and perform the prayer, and give the zakat, so leave their way free, surely God is forgiving. One of the biggest lie Muslim scholars try to give to American people say, yes, 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 there is verses in the Quran teach hate. Yes, there is verses in the Quran teach killing. But that's not for the fun of killing. These verses are only given for self-protection. And they will tell you this wonderful story. Imagine you live in your own home with your wife and your children in peace and somebody come to attack your wife or your kids. Will you stand there? Waiting for them to take over your life? No, you have to defend your family. And also you have to defend your city. And so you have to defend your country. So there are verses in the Quran teach hate, but this is only for self-protection reasons. Really? What does the Quran say here? Let's look again at the verse. He says, so when the forbidden months are passed, these are the four months where uh, Arab were in agreement with one another not to kill each other. What do you say there? Kill the idolaters wherever you find them. Not kill the idolater when they come attack you. If they harm you, wherever you find, you go and search for them. Second option Muslim have here after kills the idolater is take them slave. And the third option obviously is if they repent. Here we go. But if, so if they repent, that's convert to Islam, then let them go free. The three options the Quran gives to American. This. Obviously, I promise you. If Obama became the president, he's not going to ask you to do this right now. Neither the next generation. I'm talking about 20 years from now, perhaps 25 years from now. When Muslims became become strong in this country, as they are already in Europe, they will force this to you, to your children. Perhaps your grandchildren, for sure. They will tell you, you become a Muslim, or you become a slave, or we're going to kill you. As a matter of fact, the order is wrong here. Kill you and slave, and then you become a Muslim. That's what they call Sharia Allah. Do you know that they are about to practice Sharia Allah in England? We're only 20, 25 years beyond, behind England. So what's happening in England, it will be here in 20 years or so.
side of the street. <laughs> <laughs>